Hello, my friends. I'm so happy that you decided to join me for this video because I am going to be sharing with you my favorite self-care practices. Now, I'm not going to be talking about things like pedicures or spa days or bubble baths. Those are lovely, but I think of those as more like pampering and not so much self-care. Don't get me wrong. I love a spa day, but I think self-care needs to go a little bit deeper. Self-care practices need to be those things that we do that really help fill our cup, that help us sort of restore and replenish and reconnect to the best version of ourselves. So the practices that I'm going to share with you in this video might be a little surprising, might be not what you think of when you hear the word self-care, but that's why I want you to stick with me and watch all of them because they might be things that might really start working for you if you want to try them out. Okay, so let's do it. Let's jump in. I'm going to start right away. We're going to share my favorite self-care practices. These are the things that keep me going. These are the things that fill my cup. These are the things that I do regularly that I make time for that I have learned over the years. It's taken me a while to sort of curate this list of things that I know really work for me. And I'm hoping that a few of these are going to work really well for you. All right, so let's dive in. Number one is slowing down. I don't know about you, but my default pace for doing anything tends to be fast. I move quickly, talk quickly, think quickly, and react quickly. This can be exhausting. And I find that for me, a key self-care practice is to simply slow down. As often as I can throughout the day, I try to remind myself to slow down. If I'm doing something like making a cup of coffee, I try to intentionally move more slowly than I normally would. Being present and mindful as I grind the beans, pour the water, stir in the almond milk and take that first sip. Practicing like this helps me strengthen that mindfulness muscle in my brain over time so that living more slowly can become more of my default setting. Number two is writing out mantras or affirmations for the day ahead. Our thoughts matter. We know this. If you begin your day with your head filled with thoughts of overwhelm, stress, and worry, that is going to very much determine how you end up feeling for the rest of the day. As a self-care practice, I like to begin my day by writing out specific mantras or affirmations that refocus my thoughts towards the way I want to feel and show up for my day. It's a simple way to intentionally create new input for my mind in the morning that then serves to shape how I think and feel for the rest of the day. Number three is actively looking for delight and awe all around me. There's an old saying that goes, what you focus on expands. When we're focused on our to-do list or that pile of bills or the family drama, that expands and can quickly start to feel all-consuming. That's why one of my regular self-care practices is to deliberately shift my focus towards all of the wonder, delight, and goodness that's around me. Because the truth is that we're surrounded by it all the time. We just need to train our brains to see it. It's a practice because if I don't consciously make myself do it, I can easily default back to focusing on work stress or other worries, which then seem to take over. So I make sure that I'm regularly taking moments here and there to look for and appreciate all of the joy and delight the world has to offer. A beautiful songbird in the tree, a great mug for my coffee, the laugh of my husband or kids in the other room, the clean water coming from my kitchen faucet, the sweet face of one of my dogs. Delight is everywhere if we choose to see it. Number four is protecting my energy. These days, the world is noisy. Whether it's social media, email, the news, work or family stuff, the fact is that from the moment we wake up until the moment we go to sleep, we're being bombarded with information and demands on our time and focus. 
This is why protecting my energy has become a vital self-care practice for me. What this looks like is making sure that the first hour or so of my morning, as well as the last hour before my head hits the pillow, are protected with firm boundaries. So no email, no social media, no TV, no news during those protected times. I start my day with some calming breathing exercises and reading something that inspires me or expands my mind. And I end my day the same way. Number five is filling my cup. As I've already mentioned, the busy world we live in today makes a lot of demands on our time, focus, and energy. It can be downright draining. And if we don't take the time to refill our cup with the activities and practices that make us feel connected to our truest selves and maybe even to something greater than ourselves, we end up with nothing left to give. And so one of my favorite self-care practices is to make sure that I'm scheduling some time every day to fill my cup. Now, this is going to look a little different for everyone. For me, it's practicing yoga, reading poetry, spending time in nature, connecting with good friends. But for you, it might be rock climbing, gardening, or restoring old furniture. Each of us has a sense of what things fill our cup, and it's vital that we make time to refill if we want to be able to continue to give to others. Number six is being intentional about deciding how I want to feel today. How you feel is a choice. It can be easy to forget that. As I've touched on here already, we all have default states around what we think, what we focus on, and how we feel. If your current default states are working for you, great, don't change a thing. But I know that my default states can too often lean towards worry, stress, overwhelm, and anxiety. And that's really not how I want to live. So one of my self-care practices is to spend a moment or two deciding how I want to feel today. I do this as part of my morning routine that includes the affirmations, simple breathing exercises, and reading that I already mentioned. But I take a second to also think about what I have coming up that day, to be honest about what my default feelings about all of that could be, and then to deliberately choose how I want to feel as I move through all of that. I choose how I want to feel rather than letting my old default pathways choose for me. Number seven is choosing my win the day items. I don't know about you, but I often have a very long to-do list staring at me in the face as soon as I sit down at my desk. And this can quickly make me feel overwhelmed. And no matter how much work I get done or how many things I cross off that list, I still end up feeling like I failed the day because my list is never done. Earlier this year, I realized that this system was a recipe for failure. I couldn't win. The game was rigged. So instead of attempting to conquer my entire to-do list every day, I started selecting just one to three items on that list that if I could only get those done would mean I'd won the day. I call them my win the day items. And every morning I write out all my to-dos, but then I pick my one to three win the day items. And I know that as long as I just get those done, I've won the day. It's been a wonderful self-care practice because it means that more often than not, I now end my days feeling proud and satisfied by what I've done rather than guilty and stressed by what I haven't. Number eight is making time for mind wandering. We spend so much of our time trying to complete tasks, accomplish goals, and be productive. There's this sense that we always have to be doing something useful. But more and more, I find myself becoming a big fan of the opposite, taking time to do nothing useful at all. And after reading Johan Hari's excellent book called Stolen Focus, I learned that I'm not alone and that there's an actual scientific term for this state of doing nothing useful. It's called mind wandering, and it's apparently incredibly good for you and your brain. Now, mind wandering isn't about staring at the TV or mindlessly scrolling through your phone. That's not letting your mind wander. That's handing it over to Netflix or Facebook. When I'm talking about mind wandering, I'm talking about good old fashioned puttering around the house, garage or garden with 
no particular project or goal in mind. I'm talking about taking a walk without counting your steps or completing any errands. Just taking time to let your brain ponder and wander and rest. It's one of my favorite self-care practices. Number nine is decluttering. You don't have to be a Marie Kondo fan to know that clutter causes stress. And whether you're a minimalist or someone your family might refer to as a hoarder, we know that too much physical clutter takes a toll on your nervous system. For this reason, I make one of my self-care practices regular decluttering. Now, this doesn't have to be a whole week-long project where you clean out your entire house. You can have a big impact by just taking a few minutes on maybe the weekend to clean out one drawer or one shelf and reorganize what you're keeping and donate what you no longer need. It reduces visual clutter, which reduces stress, and it helps breathe fresh energy into your physical space. It's also a great opportunity for more of the mind wandering we just talked about. Number 10 is checking my internal atmosphere. How often do you really check in with yourself? I'm a big proponent of meditation and a regular meditation practice has definitely changed my life in many ways. However, I also know that for many people committing to daily meditation can feel like a lot. And several years ago, I heard someone ask the question, what is your internal atmosphere like today? And that really resonated with me as a different way of coming at this. So while I still meditate, I often now begin by simply sitting down, closing my eyes and just asking myself, what is my internal atmosphere like today? Is my energy high or low, light or heavy? Are my thoughts racing or crawling? Do I feel contracted or expanded, safe? or vulnerable, confident or unsure. And I find that merely having an awareness of what my internal atmosphere is currently like helps me make better choices for myself in terms of how I might need to talk to myself, what I can put on or take off my plate, as well as other self-care practices that I might need to employ. This simple method of checking in with myself each day has become a self-care practice that I absolutely love. Number 11 is breathing. I know that we already all breathe all day long, so how could breathing be a self-care practice? But we're learning more and more about the power of our breath to change our mental, physical, and emotional state almost instantly. Anytime I'm feeling anxious, stressed, or overwhelmed, I like to work with a few different breathing techniques to help balance out my central nervous system and quickly help me feel more relaxed and clear-headed. My favorite is a simple four, seven, eight breath, where you inhale deep into your belly for a count of four, hold the breath for a count of seven, and then exhale for a slow count of eight through pursed lips as though you were breathing out through a straw or blowing out birthday candles. I might do this four, seven, eight circuit five times or maybe even 10, depending on how I'm feeling. And it always leaves me feeling more calm and relaxed. And number 12 is having fun. It might seem strange, but this might be the hardest one for me. I can be a bit of a workaholic and I often struggle to unplug and take time to do things that are just fun. And knowing that about myself has meant that making time to simply have fun has become a self-care practice for me. So whether it's taking a dance class, learning to roller skate, or just getting down on the ground and playing with my dog, I try to look for experiences that offer pure, pointless fun. So there they are. 12 self-care practices that I currently rely on to stay healthy, mind, body, and soul. Tell me in the comments below which of these, if any, surprised you or made you think. Share this video if you think it could help someone else who's in need of some self-care right now. And also, please share with me in the comments your favorite self-care practices. I would love to hear what works for you. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you right back here next week.